I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. Why would you come out here to hike and be in pain and be dehydrated, get no sleep? Fear, excitement, cold sweat. Yeah. Let's go. You get to go and live real life Call of Duty for a couple of days. You don't have to join the army and deal with all the actual bullshit. It's one of the only places that you can act like every part of what you are doing is life and death. Welcome to the Azuri Front, NATO. This is all of my airsoft equipment. So these are all fake guns. The term we use is replica or toy gun. They're completely non-lethal. They just shoot little plastic six millimeter BBs. We say replica because it's a one-to-one -one scale of a actual gun. Jed Del Castillo is a former Navy hospital corpsman turned YouTuber. He orchestrates military simulations or milsim games. Think cosplay meets Call of Duty, with all the perceived fun of battle, but none of the consequences like dying. But what I want to know is, if it's just a game, why do people take it so seriously? So this is it's basically a replica of an AK-104. This is an SR-25 replica. So like, that's a Russian style gun. You've got an American gun right here, another American gun. Airsoft is named for the air pump some of the guns use. They fire plastic BBs at low power. Basically, they're toy guns for adults. I have a fully licensed Glock 18C. Point it down at the ground. Okay. That's gonna shoot full auto like really that. quick. Yep. <laughs> Unlike a squirt or a Nerf gun, an airsoft gun's resemblance to the real thing is uncanny. That's why they're popular and controversial. Between 2015 and 2016, police killed 86 people holding toy guns that looked real. Airsoft guns are supposed to have an orange tip on them to distinguish them, but people sometimes take it off. The guns feel so real that police forces use airsoft to train. Meanwhile, airsoft is a revenue stream for some actual firearm companies, like Glock, who license lookalikes. And what guns like these can do <laughs> is only getting more elaborate. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Airsoft came along after World War II and was invented in Japan. Guns were widely banned in the country, but laws were looser for people seeking out a perfect looking fake M16. In Milsim, the battles are played out as if they're real, like the guns. Bagging up plastic balls. Josh Warren helped create Milsim West, one of the most realistic simulations out there. The games are run by a group of veterans called the Cadre, including Jet. Many of them actually served in elite military units. I was an Army Ranger in C Company, 2nd Ranger Battalion. Allegedly. From 2001 <laughs> to 2005. I actually like when I talk about my background and he's like, allegedly. Gone for a while and we all missed you. But like, I never saw you like, you know, fighting wars. Or... He just left for a few years and now he's angry all the time. I, I don't know what he did. <laughs> Josh's Airsoft game puts players in a 40 hour simulation. It's a test of endurance above all. And that resonates with a lot of veterans like Jet, who did a tour of duty in Iraq. It kind of takes you back to maybe those moments that you actually liked in the military. Like, sure, there's a lot of crappy bullshit moments in the military, but there's also a lot of very deep-seated memories and, and emotions and nostalgia that go with that. Jet's wife, Leah, is one of a few women in Airsoft and has an online following under the nickname Unicorn Leah. Her style is what I might describe as G.I. Jane meets Burning Man. I don't think it was the military aspect that drew me in. It was more of the imagination part, where you could be creative, you could still like play as an adult. 
This weekend's game takes place at an Air Force base that's been vacant since the Cold War. Josh rented it out through the city and a development company. Over the next few days, players will simulate a fight between Russian forces and NATO in Aziristan, a thinly veiled Azerbaijan. I have a feeling it was chosen because of its remoteness and perceived obscurity to this mostly American crowd. Azerbaijan is dealing with an actual conflict where thousands of soldiers have died, but no one here is discussing it. Who's ready? Who is ready to fight? Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to see just shirts and socks. Good to go. Good to go. Okay. Did you find those socks yet? Yes. Right. Cheers. Did you take a look at this? Yes, I did. I okay. thought I packed my socks. All right. He's got five pair of everything. He's no, been preparing for this for the past six Father. weeks. It's in there. I don't need this. <laughs> All right, next up, eye protection. As we've seen, participants in Milsom West take it extremely seriously and insisted that if I were to participate, that I play a role alongside them. So, of course, war correspondent. We're spending the day embedded with Russian forces, AKA the bad guys, who also seem to have more fun. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Kuni Basioni. I am from Portugal. Here working for militia for Russia. They hired the Matador. We're here to kill Americans. Have any of you actually ever been to Russia? No. No, okay. <laughs> so, how do you research the character? Metal Gear. Metal Gear. <laughs> Movies and TV shows. <laughs> it's Rocky IV, very good. Uh, capitalism, well, as uh, Russian militia, we understand it crushes the soul. It takes people's uh, ambition. Uh, it produces nothing but beer-swilling, pot-bellied capitalists. Why did you enlist? My kid, he's 14. He doesn't ask for much. He doesn't ask for an Xbox. He doesn't ask for a PlayStation. He wants to do this. And so we drove six hours to come down here and do this. He's, he's in heaven right now. Did you forget your socks? No, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, very funny. I, I found him in the truck. We're all good. So did you get him into it, or did he get you into it? I got him into it. Yeah. Uh, he likes I'm, it, though. I'm happy to have him do it. It's, uh, it's a good, wholesome American thing. It's hard to imagine Americans and Russians actually duking it out in the Caucasus in 2021. Other Milsims stage more politically dicey events. For instance, where white European dudes dress up as the Taliban. There are also Vietnam War games. Milson West avoids a lot of that. It may look patriotic, but it's also just fictional enough to not seem like a militia training ground slash imperialist pissing contest. That's by Josh's design. Please do not share your like QAnon theories about the pandemic. I know the election's over, but please do not share your nuanced political opinions. No one gives a shit. Everybody go ahead and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I am a silly war nerd that plays silly war games. I will not be a dick. I will not be a dick. I know this is a game. I know this is a game. I will not cheat. I will not cheat. I will pick up my trash. I will pick up my trash. I will respect everyone and the venue. I will respect everyone and the venue. And when I get salty, and when I, get salty I will always remember. I will always remember. I'm with my fantastic friends. I'm with my fantastic friends. In our fabulous costumes. In our fabulous costumes. And we're having a fantastic time. And we're having a fantastic time. What I'm gonna go over right now is the sleep plan for once we get to the patrol base. The southern approach is the most likely avenue of approach the enemy will take, especially at nighttime. Flashlights on and be ready to move. Two, two, spread out. It's basically like hide and seek right now. Hurry up and wait. That's tonight, in a nutshell. All of this area is the Russian patrol base, and everybody is just kind of figuring out where they're sleeping. This looks pretty bad. That's actually better. Whoa. I'm going to be sleeping outside. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Ooh, there's a nail there. Ooh. 
it's like this glass. Oh, oh, take your pick. Jet Squad made it through a mostly sleepless night with minimal casualties. When Josh created Milsim West, making the event uncomfortable was sort of the point. I want to help people, I guess, understand a little bit of what that feeling is like. And so the way we try and do that is by endurance, is by making people do it for as long as possible to the point that they're exhausted, fatigued, you know, mentally stressed. Yeah, are you tracking whatever is happening with the militia in front of us? Yeah, we want, we want to try and have them draw the enemy back towards us into our ambush. Just like in real war, you have to obey orders and be strategic about who and when you shoot. Did you guys have any experience with airsoft stuff before this? First time. <laughs> nice. Welcome to the deep end. <laughs> That's exactly the name of our show, just to add another oh, unnecessarily see. meta element. <laughs> What's the moment when you feel like you lose track of reality? Uh, usually when you start getting in gunfights. I think that moment when you first hear like contact, you're like, oh, sh yeah. shit's popping. William Sherman once said, war is hell. But it's a hell we keep trying to go back to. Gangrene took out hundreds of thousands of people in the Civil War. Come on, boys, rally up behind these lines. Yet every year, people clamor to reenact the ugliest days of fighting. I happened to be shot in the same left knee that I had been shot the previous year. The first few minutes of Saving Private Ryan didn't make the European theater of World War II seem fun. But gamers across the globe storm the beaches of Normandy every day. Here we go! Off the ramp! Get your head down and keep moving! Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. We're fascinated by combat. Or is it that we're fascinated by a fictional version of it? And one where there's no actual casualties? Get off my face, Bob! Milsim West is sort of like a reenactment but of a sideways version of history, where fighting for Russia or NATO means choosing your own geopolitical adventure. This is we're taking heavy casualties. 60% of our guys are down. Roger, we're on our way. Nick, Pablo. Jets just sent his squad into hostile territory where they're outnumbered. I want you to clear that building and then we're gonna push up to you. I'm in contact with enemies, I'm moving my So this isn't good. I've got a jam in my grenade launcher tube. Nato's behind us, guys! Shoot those guys, just shoot them. Come on, gun. Two, four to two, seven. Go for two, seven. My squad is reporting a Humvee on my antenna headed east. Roger that. Hey, contact. Who's behind the building? Finally. Oh, shit. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. This way, this way, this way. We took out a few of them. They got us. No, we're dead. Stop. Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have no idea who won that battle. And honestly, that guy probably doesn't either. 
Milsimers tend to see the sport as an outlet for natural human aggression, but not everyone agrees with that. Parent activists have been protesting so-called war toys for decades. And when you don't really see the person that you're injuring and you just think of it as a target or something like that, you get desensitized. But the correlation between nerding out on airsoft and digging actual guns isn't clear cut, at least for the people I'm meeting. There's definitely people that appreciate firearms in airsoft. Being a responsible gun owner, gun owner is, is kind of our take too. Like, did, you know, did you obtain your gun legally? A lot of misconceptions are, you know, we're all just crazy gun nut people who are training for some sort of war that's gonna happen. I guess I'm kind of anti-gun, but totally for fake guns and recognize the need for guns, although I don't personally feel like I need them. At Milson West, there are people from across the ideological spectrum. At times, their neutrality seems deliberate. What could be more absurd than pretending that a war game isn't political? But maybe neutrality is practical? It ensures everyone gets along or at least doesn't kill each other for real. The Russell soldiers describe this as a suicide mission. NATO is outnumbering them. They're somewhere out there, and they said that there's no escape. Luckily, in this version of war, you reincarnate after five minutes. Like any good war correspondent, I'm chasing the story. How are you feeling? Are you dead? You're dying right now? Do you have any dying words to your mother? Please burn my computer. <laughs> That might have been me, I'm really sorry. Well, I just gotta wait for a few more minutes and then I can go back. Oh, that's getting spicy. <laughs> oh, oh. moving. For the average Milsimmer, this game provides the kind of brotherhood in arms you've only seen in movies. But for people who have experienced actual warfare, it's about something different. It's changed my life. I mean, honestly, when I got out of Ranger Regiment, it was really hard to figure out what I wanted to do next. Uh, that's a pretty hard high to come down from, to be quite honest. Like, I won't deny it, it's a little bit of a weird death cult. And, and so having that mindset all the time, like, that doesn't always jive well in regular life. You know, you can't just roll into a civilian workplace and act like everything is life or death. People are not going to like you. So it's one of the only places that you can act like every part of what you are doing is life and death. Milsim stages war in a way that invites participants to process it. But what's the line between representing something and glamorizing it? You know, there's people who watch crime TV obsessively, people who like serial killer stuff. I mean, we romanticize the entire Old West as if it wasn't some sort of a genocide, like cowboys and Indians, like that was awesome. You could ask model train hobbyists, how do you justify your hobby given the unfair labor practices of the late 19th century and the building of the railroads? Like, come on, man. You know, we, I didn't, we didn't create this society, we just live in it. Speaking from personal experience, it's hard to think about the political implications of Milsim when you're in the heat of it. Later, watching this footage, I'll be kind of embarrassed to have taken the LARP this far. <laughs> but in the moment, none of that's on my mind. Even when you're getting shot in the face, Milsim weirdly makes sense. Leah, have you gotten hit yet? I have not. I'm trying to stay tucked in as close to this wall as I can. Those are BBs right there. Yeah. I believe it is that machine gun that I pointed out to you earlier in that murder hole. Ragu beat! What did you just shout? Ragu beat. It's Russian for enemy killed. They say it in Call of Duty. <laughs> 
Like in any good war movie, the Russian and NATO forces are going to clash in one final charge. They're on the other side by 10 feet. The last battle is always kind of nuts, and that's why everybody looks forward to the last battle so much. Hey, listen up, listen up. The charge word is divide. Once you start hearing divide, do it. It's a very fun thing to do, but... You know, realistically, when you think about it, it's scary, right? I would never want to be in an actual situation like this. The craziest thing about it is the suspension of disbelief and that people for a weekend forget everything that's around them and fully immerse themselves and lean into it. There's no scoreboard. Like, this is a cooperative storytelling event. Oh, it's over, thank God. Don't you ever want to just get away from reality? It's like why people want to go to play video games and shit. I'm an EMT, so I've seen some stuff, and it just makes me release the stress and just have fun with a bunch of bros and just have a good time. What do you get out of this experience? Just like a feeling of peace, honestly. It's just interesting to me that you use the word peace because we're simulating war. It's the opposite of peace. There's something about engaging in practice fighting that makes me not want to actually fight. You know, I get my, my dose. Milsim was really what I expected. It was as if playing a caricature made some of these guys less likely to be one. Where'd that game come from? It was my brother. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I still kind of wish humans didn't find it so fun to shoot each other. But if we did it more in Milsim and less in real life, that would be a good thing. I definitely heard uh, Star with the V device. I had 59 confirmed kills. Dang. Yeah. Maybe even a Congressional Medal of VV on him? Probably. Yeah.